Hello everybody. Welcome to the introduction to clustering using K-means course. You are about to embark on a journey that will teach you one of the most powerful techniques in the world of data sciences. In this course, you will be exposed to the science of clustering. You will then learn about the working principles behind a very powerful algorithm of clustering called K-means. And finally, in the next video that will follow this one, you will learn how to write a code to make computer distinguish between various species of a flower type totally on its own. So let's get started. So what is clustering? In the simplest words, clustering is grouping similar objects together. And using this powerful algorithm, you can literally do machine learning magic. Let's see how. This includes training your computer to, say for instance, differentiate between different species of flowers, or cluster articles that are on similar subjects together, such as done by search engines, or be able to distinguish between different stages of cancer tumor provided the relevant information. Though all of these seem bizarrely different projects, they all rely on clustering. But before we dive deeper into mathematical details of clustering, or actually any machine learning algorithm, there are two very important points to keep in mind. Let's discuss it using a very interesting example. Let's say, for instance, you are given various characters of Simpsons cartoon. Your job is to divide these characters into two groups based on how similar they appear to each other and explain the reason behind the similarity. You can simply do that by dragging the characters into each group, like so. And once you're done, click on Proceed to Discussion button to continue. While doing this exercise, you must have realized that there are no unique fixed groupings. In fact, you could group these characters in several different ways. Let's say, for instance, one possible grouping is dividing the characters as Simpsons family members and as school employees. The second possible division could be females and males. Even more, you could group them as kids and adults or separation based on hairstyle or posture, etc., etc. So with this, we come to the first important note. Bell in his book writes, you need to know the question you're trying to answer. And the same point has been iterated by several other machine learning gurus. This is to say, on what basis do you want to cluster your data? Often this question is far more important than the algorithm you're trying to use to solve the problem. Now let's go on to the second important point. The second issue is that, fine, we were able to do the division quite effortlessly. But how on earth do we train the computer to do this for us on its own? The answer lies in the century-old code of Galileo Galilei. Mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. While we see colors, objects, and pictures, computers see numbers, pixel value intensities, and matrices. Thus, in order to make computer do what human mind does, we will have to translate everything in the language of mathematics. Thus, here we are. Let's get started with a mathematical model that will define to your computer how to group different objects automatically. This is a very famous and powerful tool. We call it k-means clustering. Now, something that is quite interesting about this technique is the fact that it is based on this simple formula. If you look closely, this d that you see here, this is the distance. In our example, we will use simple geometrical distance, also termed as Euclidean distance. Now, the second thing to observe over here are these two submission signs and these two variables, i and j. Upon carefully expanding this formula, we arrive at the following expression. Thus, this d is actually a combination of two different distances. Let me make this simpler for you. This middle complex expression can be better explained in terms of two distances, w, which represents distances within the cluster, 
and B, which represents the distances between the clusters. Now let's see, what does that even mean? Let's assume we are given data points belonging to three different clusters. One of the objectives of k-means algorithm is to assign each cluster with its respective centroid. Centroids are the center of each cluster, and here are marked as these dotted hexagonal objects. B represents the distances between the centroids, while W represents distances within each cluster between their respective centroids and data points. Let's try solidifying our understanding with an example. Suppose we are looking at the heart rates and ages of various patients suspected of having certain heart defects. Suppose this is the data sets we have. Here, each data point represents a patient. Assuming that we already know that the patients that fall in this blue cluster are the normal people without any heart defect, while the one with relatively higher than normal heart rate rates fall in this red cluster. We know that these are the patients, the, the ones that form in, fall in red, red cluster, with some sort of cardiac arrhythmia. Now, while we could visually, with some knowledge, group these data points into two clusters, in reality, we have thousands of data points with multiple attributes. Therefore, it becomes near to impossible to do this by visual in inspection. We thus need a clustering algorithm, such as k-means, which could do this for us automatically. The way k-means work is only with distances and without the axis. We thus have removed the axis. Also remember, the number of clusters you want to form is your choice. In this case, we will choose to form two clusters. This k-means will use two centroids. At first, the algorithm randomly assigns these centroids simply because it does not know where is the center of each cluster. Next, distances B come into play. A straight line is drawn between the two centroids here, and then a perpendicular bisector divides this line into two halves. This is called the boundary line, and its purpose is to demarcate the regions of the two clusters. Any data point that lies towards the left of this boundary line that is closer to the blue centroid is marked as a member of the blue cluster, while any data point closer to the red centroid is marked as the member of the red cluster. This is the clustering of the data set that you will see after this first step. But as you can see, these data points don't seem to belong to the red zone. They are closer to the blue cluster and should have been placed there. And this is where k-means iterations come into play. Iterations simply mean repeating the same steps with an intention to get closer to the desired result with every iteration. In iteration one, the distances within each cluster are calculated like so. Once these distances are computed, the centroid is pulled towards the center of the cluster using the mean of these distances. The same happens with the red centroid and all the distances are computed as shown. Then the red centroid too moves closer to the center of its respective cluster. The same step of computing distance between the two clusters is then repeated and a new boundary line is drawn. Note that since the centroids have shifted, so has this boundary line. Now note that these two data points that were previously in the red zone, since they now lie to the left of the boundary line, will now be placed within the blue cluster. This is how the clustering after the first iteration would look like. As you can see, there are still one data point that can shift the positions of the two cluster centroids. This algorithm proceeds to the second iteration, where the distances are recomputed again and centroids moved. Once again, the boundary line is constructed and reclustering done. This is how the result looks like after the second iteration. So when do the iterations of k-means stop? Click the option that you think should apply. 
With every moment of the centroids, the position of the boundary line changes. And this keeps on happening till there are no more changes in the positions of both the centroids and the boundary line. Thus, iterations stop when the boundary's position changes no more than a small tolerance value for the upcoming iterations. When this happens, the algorithm is said to have converged. And this is how the final cross-string looks like. Well, now that you're well aware of the working principles of k-means clustering, in the next video, we will get our hands dirty with some actual code and real data. So stay tuned.